Hello, dear friends. We are sincerely glad to welcome you again. And today we're going to talk to the esteemed Igor Mikhailovich Danilov. Greetings. Igor Mikhailovich, many people have faced situations in their life when they have put a lot of effort into making their plans come true. And suddenly, in their life, there occur circumstances that do not allow those plans to be implemented. And we can often hear advice from those around us that we need to let the situation go, and that's it. Everything will be fine, everything will stabilize and normalize. Wait, wait. What do you mean by normalize? I have planned, for example, to build or to create something, whatever. But here comes a situation that doesn't depend on me. An obstacle, yes. An obstacle? Naturally, I worry. I want to build something, right? I need to let it go and it will normalize. Will it normalize in the sense that it will be built on its own? Or that the obstacle will disappear? Or will I change my plans? Interesting. How will it normalize? People usually continue struggling with some circumstance, and at a certain moment, when they completely let go of this struggle, suddenly, and fast as lightning, it turns out that the situation is solved in the best way for them, and it is even corrected. That's already another matter. Look, what happens in life and who hasn't encountered it? For example, we do something, it doesn't matter whether it is work, study, or just everyday life, we have an idea or a goal, we implement it. Except for a spiritual one, I will emphasize. Our ordinary, earthly life, right? Yes. With a lot of problems of some kind. And we have something in mind, we implement it, then something doesn't work. We either panic or start worrying. Yes. We think a lot about it, that it doesn't work, and it doesn't work. Yes, exactly. Whereas if we relax, forget, get distracted, or just forbid ourselves to think about it, the obstacles just go away and we implement everything. Do you mean this? Well, that's another matter. It's just that our viewers posed an interesting question. They say that exactly at those moments when you let a situation go and pay absolutely no attention to this situation, It so happens that the system fixes the situation. So a question arose, why doesn't the system leave things as they are, let's say in such a bad, unwinnable state for an individual? Why does it actually spend energy to fix the situation? It doesn't always fix the situation. Here, I would say we need to take a broader look at the situation in general, at our life. We do not know which way is better for us. And often, if a person… Again, let's consider… Excuse me, I will digress, friends. This is also a very interesting question. It is one thing when a person is totally immersed in the material world, he doesn't think about either God or the devil, he's just like a pawn on a chessboard, and shaitan moves him as he wants. Then the person doesn't even have major thoughts. Yes, he's bound to have problems, lots of them. He becomes keen on something or things like that. A person has to worry. All the time he must feed his master, so to say, become emotional. Good and bad situations, it all replaces each other. It is kind of not life, but a roller coaster. And here, yes, what often happens in this case? A person has some problem. He gets distracted, the problem itself sort of goes away. And he continues his way of life again, striving for something earthly and mercantile. This is one side. Yet there may be a different side. When a person embarks on the spiritual path, begins to work on himself, and that's when the world goes crazy. And so it happens for him that starting with his close people who are around him, who suddenly turn into such, you know, I would say, angry and aggressive, always dissatisfied. Toxic. Toxic ones, yes. Everything falls apart at work, business may suffer, or, I don't know, his boss, let's say… Trouble doesn't come alone, yes. Absolutely right, yes. Such a chain of events. To bear a grudge and so on. Thus problems begin, problems from all sides. Often problems with health and everything else are added to it all. But that's different. In this case, again, if a person gets involved in worries about these matters that he is losing something at work, in business or at home, and so on. Or to put it simply, if a person breaks down, he forgets about the spiritual path and starts solving his problems, starts looking for a reason in himself and adjusting to this world, 
Yes, right. In order to be good for everybody, so that it all calms down and so on. Yes, it calms down very quickly. And eventually a person goes the same way again. In other words, on a chessboard, there appeared a pawn which simply wanted to disappear from this chessboard. To leave the game. Shaitan catches it and begins to discipline it. He disciplines it and puts it back in its place. Then it moves the way it wants. A pawn should not move like a queen. You see, it's a pawn. In other words, shaitan has put it in its place, and a person has a stable life again. Everything has been decided for him up to the seventh generation, as they say. It's a different matter when a person has embarked on the spiritual path, and his world is falling apart, but he sees the goal and doesn't notice the obstacles, meaning he is moving towards the goal. Then after a while, everything also gets better, and usually in the most unexpected way. If a person has stood his ground, he simply stopped feeding the system, the system spends energy on him, but he doesn't spend it in return. And even better, if he transforms those forces which are set against him into spiritual growth, he doesn't spend them somewhere on some… He does squeezes out a mosquito, right? Yes, right. Not on magic, but he really squeezes out a mosquito in order to grow spiritually. Eventually, he simply disappears from the sight of shaitan, and then he realizes where he invests his attention, that's what is implemented. But the material world should not be a priority for such a person. Otherwise, it's enough for him to stumble on the spiritual path. What does this mean? It means that a person has again become too interested in material things, it has become the main goal for him. In other words, he has lost his goal. Even if he left the game board of shaitan, this pawn simply disappeared. But then he gets interested in something and appears on the board again. Such things happen too. Everything depends on a person. At the beginning of the spiritual path, it even happens several times a day, yes? No. Well, at the initial steps, it's normal. Yes, sure. A person should explore the world, he should fall and get up. That's normal. There are a few individuals who are steady, a person has felt, he has understood, he sees the goal, and nothing will deviate him. Because it is his home, it is his goal, it is his life. But a lot of people have families, jobs. You know how hard it is for people not to get distracted. That's why it is normal. Also, Igor Mikhailovich, we've just been discussing such a point that trouble doesn't come alone. But can a person create problems and complications for himself, so to say, by his own state? A lot. Of course. Let's take again a person who has immersed himself, as we said, in a toxic environment within himself. He becomes toxic and everything around him becomes toxic. When you approach such a person, you already feel that he hasn't said anything yet, you haven't even seen him or his face, let's say, in order to understand, at least by his facial expression, that he's in a bad mood. But you are coming up and already feel that you are getting into some kind of a viscous and prickly jelly. Isn't it like that? Yes, exactly. That's the answer. And next to such a person, you cannot even breathe, let alone Being around, when you are around him, let's say, your every cell begins to vibrate out of tune, that's why everyone wants to escape from that person. Naturally, he provokes aggression towards himself. Why? Because, you know, he is like, based on the hypothesis that was voiced at the forum about the states of snakes, either coiled or linear states, it was well explained there that there are toxic snakes, meaning poisonous ones, So, if we imagine this, apply it again to a person, when he immerses himself in a vessel with those biting and poisonous snakes, he himself becomes filled with this poison, and he infects everyone around him. These snakes actually crawl from him onto people, bite them, and they also become angry. He changes their code. Of course. And all his environment begins to vibrate in this way, and it keeps on going until it stops. There are such people who hasn't encountered them. When you seem to be talking about peaceful and good things, but a person is prickly and unpleasant, and he immediately reduces everything to negativity again. This is common and frequent. It's very interesting, Igor Mikhailovich. There was also such a question. If personality is good by nature, why does it sometimes make such bad choices? Oh my God, if only it made choices. It would be great. Quite often, 
Personality is simply immature and incapable of making a choice. It is consciousness that makes all decisions instead of it and lives instead of it. Meanwhile, a human's personality doesn't even exist. Let's say, he only finances the tricks of consciousness and the life of consciousness. In fact, a person is looking at his life from the outside. He sees that something is wrong but cannot change anything. And this wheel just keeps rolling on and on. When shaitan moves a person on the chessboard, does the latter live or not? Or does he exist? Here's the answer for you. Everyone realizes that the world is illusory, life is illusory, and that they are not where they should be. But why is this happening? Because a person is really not where he should be. That's exactly what his personality understands, but he cannot do anything about it. And that's what spiritual practices are needed for. For that you need at least some experience of cognizing that you are not a puppet, that you are a human being, so that a person could make at least one step on his own without the guidance of shaitan. That's where freedom actually begins. I would also like to raise such a topic that very often a person perceives problems on his way, or rather he calls things that are not in his plans problems, let's put it so. And I would like to discuss the point that we can often hear from people that, well, I don't succeed. Spiritual practice doesn't work out. Wait, wait. I have tried to inform people, but I fail in this process. Wait, I have a question for you right away, friends. What does it mean that the spiritual practice doesn't work out? You failed at spiritual practice, but what did you want to get? What did your consciousness come up with and tell you? What exactly are you supposed to get during the practice or after it? A simple question. A cake, a pastry, or what? Or to get something in the process. Or to get something in the process. Or to repeat some experience you had the day before yesterday. Should wings grow or a nimbus begin to shine on you? What do you want to get? People say it doesn't work. Or they want to enter the same river twice or thrice. This is really so, isn't it? Yes, right, to repeat a certain result. It's the same about informing. I don't succeed. I tried it, but didn't succeed. Yes, exactly. I'm telling people, but they don't want to listen. But what do you want from them? The very fact that you told a person about something means that it has already worked out. The fact that he hasn't accepted it, hasn't bowed before you as a guru, hasn't perceived you as a boss or a leader, he doesn't see you as a president, right? Is that what hasn't worked out? Yet, if we want to dominate and rule over someone, that's a different matter, friends. But when you inform a person, the person is busy, yes, he has heard and looked and said, yes, thank you and okay, and he politely walked away, then you've already done a lot and you've already succeeded. Even if this person didn't want to listen, but he heard a little bit about the creative society, or at least the phrase creative society, this means you have already informed him. Why? I'll explain. It is all very simple. He heard one phrase from you, he heard a little bit more from someone else. But when he hears it from a third person, he will become interested. You see, no matter how much he denies it all, he will still come across the creative society, these explanations and these concepts from time to time. And in fact, he himself wants what you are talking about, the creative society. Any sensible person wants this. He wants to live in safety, he wants to live without problems. No one wants to live in a mass of problems, in illness or in old age. You know, even if A person is destined to die. It is better to die in a healthy body. He just falls asleep and doesn't wake up. Why? Well, yes, the energy source has run out, so to say, and a person rather passes into another state after leaving the body than lives even to a ripe old age. What is a ripe old age? It means feebleness first and foremost, and inability to do what you want. Is that life? A simple question. Infirmity. Is it a constant struggle for each day? Excuse me, for every breath? Is this life when, even today, modern technologies already allow us to solve this problem, and if we make a little effort, then, as it was said at the forum, a human will be able to live 1500 years in a young, healthy body. This doesn't play any role, it's just a body. There is enough energy, there's an inserted program, And that's it, the body maintains and regenerates itself. Our body is unique. It's just that we haven't really studied it. We know more about outer space than about a human being. Well, that's really true. While human capabilities are enormous, and to live 1500 years, if a person wants to be here that long, do something useful and wonderful, 
and enjoy every day. Well, what's wrong with that? This is not a play of words or a manipulation with someone's opinion or consciousness or a human desire to live longer. This is reality. Why, in the creative society, a lot of people are needed. It's in the consumerist format that you need a small group which can serve the elite. And that's it, and to hope that someday they will either manage to break into the elite or maybe at least their great-great-grandchildren will manage to become the elite and then someone will work for them. You know, this is ridiculous, isn't it? As a matter of fact, the creative society already creates an elite of every person. Even the elite nowadays cannot afford to live the way everyone will live in the creative society. Well, isn't there something to work and strive for? Even though they don't want to listen to us, but they're already here. It has already worked out. Unless you want more, of course, right? This is a very important understanding, Igor Mikhailovich, that indeed a person has already sown a grain and he doesn't know when the whole planet will turn green. He has already succeeded. Certainly. It is the same in spiritual practice. That is, if a person has at least calmed down, that's already a step. He's already trying to find that love at least a little bit. This is already an aspiration for love. It's not an aspiration to cheat someone or to fight against someone, to oppose someone in general, to sow evil and problems in this world. But it's a search for love and peace. It's already a search for God or a way to God. The person has already succeeded. Therefore, my friends, be careful with it. Shaitan throws up a lot of desires. He often plays with you through your own consciousness and sows doubts in yourself. Such is his essence. That's what you need to know and that's what you need to study. When you see that doubt arises in you, which is imposed on you, then just take a look whether you need it or not. Maybe you don't need it. If you don't need it, then why do you accept it? And if you do not accept it, then you are free from it. Right? Yes, right. Everything is in a person's hands. That's what freedom is all about. Yes, there are situations in life when we cannot change something, when there are a lot of problems. Here in three-dimensionality, You know, the worst, the most dangerous and the most evil are people. We create problems for ourselves. This is also true. And often you can get into such a situation that there seems to be only one way out of it. But even if there is only one way out, you should go to God, even from this situation. There is no way out anyway. It's very important not to give up, because the system really teaches us to capitulate, it immobilizes us. Just let the situation go and don't do anything. Don't take any active actions. Many people have even noticed that when they encountered the knowledge and understanding of where this world is going, into what kind of an abyss, they heard that sly voice in their hearts and the suggestion that they should accept it. But the acceptance is sort of humble obedience, not some kind of active of action, not to fight for life, but exactly… Bow down before Satan. To bow down. Yes, exactly. That's the whole answer. It's easy to bow down to Satan. It's very easy to give up. But is there any sense in that, if there is only one outcome? So when you know this outcome and understand it, there is no sense to bow down. What for? Like Judas for 30 pieces of silver? Just to keep them in your pocket for a while. After all, you cannot take anything with you. You see, life is simple. There is nothing in this world, nothing at all, that would be worth bowing down to Satan for. He won't give you life. And that says it all. All he has is ashes, and it is all made of ashes. If we build a creative society, we will be in charge of the ashes, not Satan. Look at how interesting this is, right? Everything is in people's hands, even the creative society. And the future is also in people's hands, in everyone's hands. If we treat our future and the future of all people irresponsibly, we will naturally be pawns on the chessboard. We will clash with each other, we will have a lot of problems, just like our children and our great-grandchildren, and nothing will change. Well, in this case it will, of course. God grant that we live up to our years, We shouldn't forget about the climate Cerberus either. But in fact, everything is in people's hands. We can change anything. We can totally change our whole life. I'm not saying that 
We have to change it right now. Let's say, if you've been living in problems and you need to get rid of all these problems, to become rich and independent, you know, these kinds of stereotypical mindsets like think and get rich and so on. I'll put it this way, the richer you become, the more you will become dependent. And it's true. Why? Because in order to earn a lot of money, you have to put a lot of effort into it, and your attention will flow there. And money is the equivalent of your attention invested in acquiring it. Yes, others also invest a lot of attention in their work, but get pennies or nothing at all. Such things happen too. We invest where we shouldn't. We have chosen the wrong thing. Shaitan has placed us on the wrong square. But sometimes we cannot even move from it. Why? Because Shaitan decides for us. But if a person becomes free, he can leave this board altogether. That doesn't mean to leave for the other world. It means to stay here, serving God Himself, the spiritual world. And at the same time, this person gains freedom. Certainly, Shaitan is against that, and he will definitely create problems. But if we begin to get involved in those problems and start living by them, then our life is a problem. Whereas if we think and live by something different, then what we think about becomes our life. Everything is simple. You know, Igor Mikhailovich, going back to that phrase and the mindset that I don't succeed, especially when people are working on themselves, very often we see that this phrase usually comes up when people want to influence another person in their relationships. Oftentimes. Not to influence oneself, not to change oneself, but the other person. Look, in family relationships, there is always a fight for domination. Yes, some acute situations. Not reconciliation, not mutual understanding, Although, from a psychological perspective, they start philosophizing. We want to understand each other and so on, but in fact, it's a backstage war within one family. And no matter how long people live together, there is some kind of confrontation anyway, until somebody becomes smarter or reaches a certain reconciliation, right? But whichever way we look at this, people remain humans. Everyone lives in their own shell, and everyone is an individual. This should be understood as well. Here's a simple example. Everybody is looking for tools of domination over each other. And someone comes across spiritual practices or that very idea of the creative society, right? And the person starts teaching even his other half, so to speak, from the position of a teacher and domination. But how will the other half react to this? A simple question, especially if there's constant confrontation between them. Will the other person accept it with open arms or how? Opposition immediately activates, right? One hundred percent. And new quarrels arise. Because of what? Because of a good idea. Or, excuse me, because of the fact that a person is sharing the knowledge about how to reach God's world. And on this ground, those demons are fighting. There is no other way to put it, because these are demons fighting. One decided to manipulate the other by means of this knowledge, just to fight for power. To re-educate. Of course. Isn't it so? Up to divorces, family breakups, and so on. And in the end, who is to blame? God is to blame. Why? Because He sent this knowledge here. And it came to their family and destroyed their family. Two demons had a fight with each other. What does God have to do with that? A simple question. Let's take any religion, whatever religion we take. During the existence of that religion, millions of families have broken up. Millions of families have split up. Why? Because of faith. Because faith and religion have been used as a tool or as an attempt to dominate another person. Just that. Isn't this true? It is. So who is to blame? Some religion, the knowledge, or the person himself, because he allowed the demons to predominate in him? Well, it's all very simple. It is the same, excuse me, with other people, those not from the inner circle, not from the family, but some friends, acquaintances, colleagues, or even strangers who meet somewhere. People are engaged in spreading knowledge. When you understand that your task is to let a person know about it, you approach him and tell him. You simply ask, do you know about the Creative Society project? And that's it. Then the conversation begins. The person doesn't want to hear you. But you've already done a lot, my friend. You've already told him the magic word. 
and he's already walked away reflecting. Yes, he may scold you in his head. Another kind of globalist sectarians or a party of some sort that is trying to impose something, but he thinks about that. You have already sown a seed in him, and when the soil is prepared, maybe the seed will grow, right? Yes, you need to work not on somebody, but on yourself. On yourself, yes. To correct yourself. And when you approach a person, even in order to inform him about a good international project that really makes everyone's life better, but with the aim of dominating that person, and with a desire that he will servilely listen to you, pay attention to every word you say. My friends, naturally, it's a deliberate expectation of… In short, all this is simony, friends. It is simony. And you should get rid of it. What is our task? To build a new world. And we should actually start with ourselves, right? More love, less evil. In general, evil should not live in a person. It is very destructive, it is poison. If we keep poison in ourselves, it corrodes us, right? Envy, excessive desires, simply hatred for someone. Even the fact that we remember bad things and from time to time recall them and feel emotional about them already means that we keep evil inside us. But what for? The same applies to our near and dear people. If we care about them, why get nervous and anxious? So, in reality, friends, it is very simple. If you want peace, become peace yourself, right? Then everything will be fine. You see how simple it is? Igor Mikhailovich, yes, you've also said that the prophets always spoke about love. And from the perspective of that hypothesis, which was voiced at the forum, of course, it is already understood in a different way. We were asked such questions, and you have just partially answered them. In what way do bad thoughts affect our close people? How do bad thoughts affect us? And how do good thoughts and our love affect other people, our surroundings? They do. But often, this love of ours and our good disposition is used by demons sometimes, isn't it so? This happens too. But you shouldn't be offended by demons. That's why they are demons. They are supposed to exploit and manipulate. The main thing is what you write in your Book of Life. One hundred percent. Yes. And it's the most important point, right? What you write down. So, friends, let's just love each other. Thank you. Thank you very much, Igor Mikhailovich. Thank you, friends. Peace be with you.